Alright, so here we have the Elegoo Mars Resin 3D Printer. I just got this off of Amazon, about 260 USD. And this is how it comes, in a box with some foam, got your build plate, resin tank, and then of course you have your accessories box. So I'm going to go ahead and take the accessories out of the box. Power cord, go ahead and get that set all up. So this actually plugs into the rear of the printer with a little barrel jack. Go ahead and plug that guy in there. Try not to snag the vat while you do it. You plug the power cord into the brick, like so. And I have a power strip over here. So now it says to remove the vat. Set the vat aside, turn the power on, peel off the front screen protector. So it booted up, it's as loud as it seems it's going to get. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can show you guys. Go ahead and hit the tool button, and then I'm going to manually raise this up. So what it's doing is it's raising that little arm there, which the build plate's going to sit on. Now then, the reason I did that is so we can actually slip the build plate right on, tighten this down, and there's two screws, one on the front, one on the side. They said they include an Allen key, and they do. They actually include two with some extra screws. These are just regular grub screws, they're set screws, whatever you, your terminology is for them, but they're only there to hold the build plate. Just like you would like Bontech gears um, on your FDM 3D printer. So let's see if I got the right size. Feels like it. Instructions say to loosen the two screws. Now I've seen horror stories of people dropping this build plate, so I'm gonna Put my hand underneath it just to be sure that I don't. And these guys are actually super tight. Yeah, see the build plate shift? I've seen people drop it. I'd rather not. So we got one. Let's get plate number two. So that's all I did was about a quarter turn. And this thing is nice and loose. So I want to kind of get it to look like it's square as possible. Then we're gonna grab some A4 paper. A4, legal, whatever, standard copy paper. So it's a little too big to fit in between there. How do we solve that? Very simple. Now, we want to take it and we will actually go show you. So there's actually going to be a menu on here. Go to home. And we'll actually lower itself to the plate. Now, i got to do this again with the paper. But that's basically how you would do it. So I'm going to go ahead and raise her back up. So now that I've showed you the button in which to press, I'm going to go ahead and make sure we're squared up looking mm -hmm. as best as we can be. Stick the A4 paper in there, hit that same button, and let it home itself all the way down. This is to get a decent space between the FET film and the VAT. So it's going to home itself. I'm going to leave the paper there, take our screw or our Allen key, and we're going to slowly tighten the screws. I kind of want to just tighten these guys up. Don't want to move the build plate too much. You can even kind of hold it a little bit gently in place so it doesn't twist on you. And I like to get mine nice and firmly tight. Uh, some people say you don't have to tighten it that much. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Last thing I want is to come find my build plate in a giant vat of resin. So now that it is tightened, we can go ahead and select 10 millimeters and raise this up. Bed should be level. Easy as that. 
Now, something that they do not tell you in the instruction manual is on the back of this FEP. I'm not sure if you can see through it. There's actually a protective cover on the back. It tells you to peel it off if you look. So you just go ahead, peel the protective cover off. It takes all this dust and grime out of here. And then, I'm not sure orientation matters with this, but I like to keep my little drain portion right here in the right hand front corner. Personal preference. So make sure that your screen is clean, no grubby fingerprints or anything like that. I haven't touched it, so it should be fine. If it is, isopropyl alcohol, lint free cloth. Slide the vat back into the printer. Tighten down these nuts equally. It's very important. If you don't do it equally, you'll have a problem. And I just noticed a problem with this printer. Let me show you. So you can see that there is the nut hole. I am way off. You can actually push this vat too far to the back. Very interesting. So now that we've determined you can overshoot by putting the vat in, now we can tighten these equally. If you tighten one more than the other, you're going to actually press the FEP too hard to one side, and it's going to skew it. So if you push too far down to this side, this one will tighten up prematurely, but the FEP is not actually pressed to the plate of the screen on that side. So get them equally until they both stop, then give it a nice good turn. Lock it in nice and tight. So I'm going to raise this guy up a little bit more. Comes with a nice little um, build plate draining tool, so I'm going to try and check out what that looks like. Looks like you can actually take the build plate off and slide it in here. That way any residual, residual resin can drain off while you wait. Overnight, doesn't really matter. As long as it's not in direct sunlight, your prints aren't going to cure, your resin's not going to cure in there. So that's actually a nice nifty little tool. Um, there is one on Thingiverse that actually bolts to this and is permanently mounted where you can just slide it out and back in. I'll be printing one of those first go. They do give you some gloves. I, I don't like the cheapo gloves and I guess they give you a measuring cup, USB. Uh, not sure what the screwdriver is for, probably to take apart all the little nuts and bolts around here, so we'll keep that. Plastic scraper, um, I've melted most of mine with my other resin printers, so I'll upgrade to a metal one. Looks like they give you some snippers, and these are kind of the standard Chinese snippers that come with every resin printer, or every FDM printer. Good for snipping off those little sprues. We have some filtration uh, cones, which is great for pouring um, unused resin back into a bottle. I don't have that problem. I pretty much use all my resin. And they have some PM 2.5 dust masks. These look to be a little more upgraded than the little um, kind of like, I don't know, medicinal mask that you would see in like a nail shop. Maybe they're a little better. I don't know. I use my own respirator when I'm working with resin, which you'll see very shortly. Um, so again, that's how you set it up. USB. I very much recommend buying your own. These are kind of cheap and known to short out. And the USB is in the back. I'll be printing a extension holder to extend it and put it to the front. All right, so I'm back, and hopefully you can hear me through my respirator. Um, most of the time, Elegoo resin doesn't smell very bad. However, this machine, I'm not sure what the smell is going to be when it comes out of the machine. With my anacubic photon, however, I have an actual um, carbon filtration system set up with it. And it's just activated carbon pellets over the fan that filters out any smell. This one, I cannot see where that fan is. I believe it's underneath, so I'll be doing some troubleshooting to find out and to clean it and make the air a little bit easier to breathe. So, 
With the gloves I like to use are these Venom Steel Gloves. They are pretty much puncture resistant and cut resistant. Not like super, but if you snag it, it's not going to immediately tear. They're just a little more tough and they are chemically resistant. So that's what I'll be using. Um, the only place I found them is Lowe's and they're kind of expensive. It's 20 bucks for 100 So if you guys know where I can get those for cheap in bulk, I would absolutely love it. So it's very important to be wearing gloves and some kind of respiratory protection because again, this stuff is pretty toxic. Um, it won't kill you that I know of, but you don't want it on you. So always shake up your resin before you go and put it in. This just gets any oxygen into the resin, helps it cure better. So we'll go ahead and we'll pour this into there. And it's very hard to see on this vat, but there is almost like an indentation in the vat itself. And it kind of curves, and that's kind of where you want your resin to be. It kind of starts fluting out. So, you can kind of see there, it's all nice and shook up. Um, I usually let it settle just a little bit before I start printing. That's a lot of air bubbles in there, and this is the clear version. So, now that we have it all set up, um, you'll go ahead and you'll put the actual lid on the unit. Nice and gentle. And it just kind of sits on it. And that's why, again, I'm wearing a respirator. I don't know how good this seal is. I might end up 3D printing a gasket. And again, kind of making some kind of fan filtration here. Um, you can actually see back there on my anacubic photon, there's actually activated charcoal over the fan. So it keeps a lot of those fumes out. So now that we're ready, we'll just go ahead and go back to the main menu here. Alright, so now that we've actually properly zeroed this, you can kind of see the resin in there. His, the bubbles have stopped a bit. And it's all back on. We'll go ahead, we'll go back, go back again. And I have the USB plugged in the back there. And we'll go ahead and I just want to check the system real quick. Yeah, not too much you can do. Uh, we'll go to print, and it looks like they have a couple of different folders, which is nice, knowing you can actually use folders. Uh, looks like they got some programs on there for the computer. Um, wow, it actually looks like they added some My Mini Factory files. That's really interesting. Um, this is different. Usually it's just a rook it comes with. Human female wizard. That sounds interesting. Um, okay. I don't know. Ah, okay. So you don't actually have the model. Good to know. Um, file picture? Nope. Looks like they want you to go actually buy it. I don't see... Yeah, it just basically tells you to go buy it. Real interesting, real interesting. Okay, so let's go to the Rook. There you go. It's a weird format. I'm hoping it takes something other than that. Go ahead and hit the print. And the print head will lower and begin its initial printing. I got a memory error code, that's interesting. Let me hit stop on it. And we'll see, I'll unplug and replug in the USB back here. And we'll go back to print, the rook. And no error that time, cool. I don't know what that was about. I just unplugged and replugged the uh, USB and it seems like it was okay. So, alright, it looks like it says it's gonna take unknown amount of time. 
super awesome. Uh, I would imagine probably about four or five hours, honestly. That's usually about how these take. So there it goes. And we'll see if it cures. And here we have four hours and 20 minutes for the Elegoo Mars Rook model. Let's take this off and take a look at what's inside. So here they are hanging upside down. There's the resin bat. They look pretty good actually. We'll go ahead and clean these up and see what they look like once they're cleaned up. Alright guys, well that's the Elegoo Mars setup, unboxing, and first prints. Actually a pretty awesome printer. So if you guys want to see more content like this, please take a like, subscribe, and keep a lookout because we got some more projects coming your way. Catch you later.